Open up the sky background folder and let's resize the background sketch that this is all based on. It's a really tiny image because I actually lost the true sketch file when my hard drive and computer was stolen a few years ago. But the truth is you don't really need a high quality sketch for the background because we're just using this as a compositional element to help us know approximately where to place and size things. I'm using the transform command, control T to resize this. Now when we loaded the images into Photoshop, you'll see that they all came in as smart layers. That's what this little icon in the bottom means. That's great for some things. For example, if you have a rendered background that you'll likely switch out at a certain point, smart layers are wonderful for that. But in this case, we don't really need the smart objects. So we'll just rasterize the images as we go. Transform this to the size of the page and keep the existing aspect ratio by holding down shift. Turn on the high rise glass layer and place it approximately where the building outline is in the background. We don't need to be too precious about resizing this. It's a high enough quality image that we can distort it a bit without worrying about the image quality. Rasterize it and use shift control U to convert to grayscale. Put that on 50% opacity. Uh, let's cut off the edge here. Press M for rectangular marquee and select the edge of the building. Press delete and this just gives it a bit of a frame. Let's turn on this composited image that I put together from Google Street View. It's not very high quality, but we're looking for speed here. And because this is going to be faded back, we really just need to give the impression of the context instead of worrying too much about the exact accuracy in pixels. Let's just check the image placement compared with the final image and see where everything should be. Okay, so I'll put this back to about 35% opacity and also just size it down a bit. I'm going to create a layer mask by clicking on the layer mask icon down here. Control click on the building layer to select it, then making sure that black is your background color, delete the selection from the layer mask by pressing delete. You can press control D to deselect the building. Click onto the layer mask for the Google Street View image and press E for eraser. Right click and set the hardness down to zero. Increase the size so that you have a big soft eraser and erase along the bottom of the layer to create a bit of a faded edge. Let's make a new layer called F underscore road. The F stands for fill, indicating that it's a filled layer that we've created. I like to make sure I name all of my layers so that it all makes sense. Trust me, it's way better to do this from the beginning than to go back afterwards and try to figure out what every layer is. Especially if you're working at a firm, you may have to hand this file over to someone else to work on and you don't want your colleagues secretly fuming that they can't understand your layer structure. Let's use L for rectangular lasso to create a little road shape here and then shift F5 or edit fill with 50% gray. Now if we double click the layer, the layer styles panel pops up and we're going to give this a pattern overlay just for a bit of texture. I have a bunch of my own patterns loaded, but this is a Photoshop default noise texture. Let's just put that on uh, soft light at 60%. We can also give this a tiny bit of a gradient from the background color to foreground. Keep it at 90 degrees and just fade it back. Put that one on overlay 30%. So that's just gonna give us a bit of a road in the background and um, let's put this layer on opacity 65. Okay, we have this beautiful watercolor splotch and I'll show you how to transform it into the sky. Let's control T transform this and rotate it until the bottom is at the top. Resize until it fills the sky behind the horizon. You don't need to keep this with the right aspect ratio. You can kind of shift it around so that it fills the background. Now let's press M for the marquee and select the upper portion that we want to keep, then press the layer mask. That cuts away all the parts of the image that are outside of the selection. Let's put this behind all the other layers. We can see the nice texture coming through. Um, let's just check the finished one. Looks like what I've done is size this a bit bigger to fill the background completely. So click on the layer mask, press E, and with a big soft brush, erase some of the hard edges. Let's do the bottom too. We can press G for gradient, then press X to switch the background and foreground colors. We wanna make sure we see the background fading to transparent. Make sure you're still on the layer mask and then click and drag to get give a bit of a fade. Let's change the color. It's a bit too gray and stormy for me. 
Press Ctrl Alt U to access the hue saturation panel and click colorize. Let's pick a lighter aqua blue, just like this. I'm noticing there's a bit of the sky that's angled behind the trees, so let's use the content aware healing to dab in some extra sky. Press V to get back to your cursor. Okay, we have this car, and because the background is all black and white, let's press Shift Control U to convert to grayscale, then resize it so that it makes sense for the scale. We don't want it to be perfectly crisp because background layer is always a little bit hazy. So let's use a Gaussian blur at 0.5 to make this a little less sharp and fade it back to about 65 so it doesn't stand out so much. We also have this bus and first we're going to flip it horizontally and then isolate it. One option for cutting out is to use quick selection to click and drag over top of the bus and this makes a smart selection based on the image. If you want to deselect something, just drag while pressing Alt. And to add to the selection, just keep clicking and dragging. Control and the plus sign will zoom in. And if you want to pan, just use the space bar and click over. Let's refine this selection a bit and see what we've got by using a quick mask. Press Q and you'll see the selection more clearly. You can then use a couple of tools to refine the selection. The lasso can add in regions that you haven't quite selected yet. Or you can use the brush and eraser to get the last remaining edges. Make sure your eraser and brush tools are hard and small to get the edges. You can also use the brush to brush back in the edges that you might have accidentally selected before. Okay, so we have this selection. Press Ctrl J to duplicate the selection onto its own layer. You can erase the previous layer. The bus is a bit off kilter, so let's distort it so that it fits the elevational view a bit better. Use transform distort and grab the edges to move them down or up to change the slant so that it's straight on. Just like the car, we're going to desaturate this, add a little bit of a blur and resize it down for scale. Let's put it on 65. Let's give it a layer mask and use gradient. So press X until you see the gradient switch to the one we want. And then give the bus a fade at the side and the bottom. Let's bring this glass layer in front. The only part we really want is the top part here, which is going to be a glass handrail in the background of the building. Use the lasso tool to cut that out and then use control J to duplicate the layer. Rename it F handrail and put it on multiply. We need to give this a bit of distortion, so let's do that and resize it down to scale. Press Alt Shift and click to duplicate this over. Select both layers and press Command E to merge the layers. You see they lose their blend mode when we do this, so we can just pop them back onto Multiply. Do this a couple more times until you've got the entire handrail. We'll probably add an extra piece here later once we get the plaza built up, but for now I think the background is pretty much done. So. Let's move on to paving and vegetation.